Greetings, ladies and mendigents, and welcome to this narration of the web novel Burning Stars, Falling Skies, taken from both HFY and Royal Road. The link to the original will be down below, and as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please subscribe, like, and comment so that the great algorithm in all its wisdom decides to help grow this channel. Chapter 14 Crossing Blades The bridge's screening vessels rattle as the smaller ships try to maneuver into position and shoot down the oncoming rockets. On the hologram, circles appeared around the icons representing the ships, indicating that their radiators were withdrawn due to imminent combat. The icons began pulsing, indicating that they were firing actively. Laser pulses and flechette swarms, little more than heavy accelerated sand, spat out from the defending ships into space. One by one, the icons representing the rockets began to wink out at the point defense emplacements struggled to find them in the emptiness of open space. Thirty-five of the weapons were transformed into rapidly cooling debris by the time the remainder screened past the screening vessels. Threedak exhaled. The invaders were targeting the Ashley Kooning. The screening ships would be safe for a while longer. Ultimately, it was for the best. The invaders' firing program would allow the screening ships to pour additional point defense fire into the rockets before they arrived. The trade-off was that the tall ships were going to have to take a beating. Eventually, the invaders were more concerned about the complete kill by preventing the screening ships from fleeing than they were for efficiency. Of the 36 Dodge Tile missiles, only three approached the enemy's screening units close enough to detonate their warheads. One fusion charge went off far enough from the enemy that it did little more than blind their sensors with a flash of radiation and light. Only one of the two laser warheads actually hit the invader. A spear of coherent X-rays and sublimated a chunk of outer hull into plasma. Threedak bumped a grasper briefly as a gout of oxygen and debris erupted from the screening vessel. The lightly armored craft slewed to the side as the blast expelled the matter, spinning slightly in a frictionless void. Moments later, the flow of oxygen cut off and the enemy ship resumed its previous course as automatic failsafes kicked in. The Ashley Koenig flickered on the plot and the rockets closed in in its point defense envelope. Its larger, heavier lasers shattered the rockets at extreme range whenever the ship's fire control teams could get a proper solution on them. Unfortunately, at least a couple of the approaching rockets were laden with countermeasures rather than warheads, filling space with static and electronic ghost images that suckered the Kooning's gunners into missing more often than not. The rockets drew nearer to the torch ship, their numbers dwindling by twelve, at close range, the Kooning launched defensive flechettes and counter-rockets, smaller weapons with only a single-stage high-performance engine and clean but high-yield warhead. The projectiles started towards each other, brightening the hologram with the series of flashes. The invading rockets were on the final engagement window in a moment, survivors veering wildly to catch up with the diving torch ship. Then they detonated between the final wave of the defenses and the electronic fog created by the Ashley Koenig's electronic countermeasures. Only ten of the rockets were on target. Nine were laser warheads, erasing chunks of the Koenig's armor in flares of plasma. But the last was a fusion blast. The bridge crew were uniformly thrown from their couches as the explosion rocked ship. The schematics on the Katasha's keyboard glowed amber as the lasers, smaller kinetic cannons, and rocket tubes were stripped from the entire side of the vessel. For a moment, the fusion torch flickered dangerously between amber and red before the indicator settled on amber. A sheer sign that the housing was cracked or that the engine itself was damaged in some way. Threedak paced back and forth, her tail flicking nervously as the two battle groups exchanged blows. With half of the point defense weapons eliminated, the Ashley Kooning struggled to keep up with the onslaught of rockets. The screening ships and the drones did their best, gunning down at least 50 of the oncoming projectiles, but 60 to 70 of them got through with each wave. Kooning quickly flipped its undamaged side towards the invaders and did its best to weave through the explosions of blasts of X-rays, but it still took a beating. Twenty-six X-ray lasers struck the belt armor. Most of them were absorbed by the armor by five struck a weak points. 
whether from a weapon or emplacement or buried in the hull, or an area where the previous laser had melted off the armor. It didn't particularly matter. The beams cut down into the ship's interior, getting crew, women, and melting internal machinery. Three Dax fangs bit into the tissue of her mouth as she stared at the systems flickering from green to amber and from amber to red on the display. Luckily, it was able to avoid any further direct hits from the warheads. The fusion warheads detonated around the Kuning, but a combination of ECM, deft maneuvering, and luck kept any from them exploding close enough to do anything more than scratch the ship's paint and dose the crew with a low amount of radiation. A small miracle, but given the almost 250-kilometer range of the laser warheads, it made sense that they would be much more likely to weather a point of fence barrage and strike the dodging ship. Their ships limped through the storm of rockets. Most of the screening vessels were venting steam to try and keep their heat within reasonable levels, and the Gurning looked like half-melted candle covered in craters and divots, but the battle group remained intact. Dredak sighed with relief before taking in the condition of the invader's screen. Five screening vessels remain, surrounded by a slightly diminished cluster of fighters. A couple of the survivors bore scars from the Dutch tall laser warheads, but most of their combat capabilities appeared to be undiminished. Of course, that wasn't even taking into account the three untouched invaded torchships behind them. Lakshia knew better than to target the more heavily armored and defended warships given the low volume of rockets their battle group was able to launch. Their only chance of damaging the invaders was to risk targeting the cheaper and more evasive screening vessels in the hopes that their lighter armor would make them more vulnerable. Kurnan opened fire on the invader screen with a spinal kinetic cannon. Threedak could almost feel the thrum of the great magnetic coils as the torchship fired a fuel side of three seconds into the charging cluster of invading warships. Immediately, the ship began venting steam to offset the sudden heat buildup of the energy-hungry cannon. The gigantic shells fired from the maneuvering thrusters, using their limited tracking abilities to keep their agile screening vessels from escaping entirely. Every ten seconds, the Kurning fired another three-round burst and the enemy screening ships. Threedak looked at the Katash worriedly. Are they not returning fire because they are low on shells or... Uh, she trailed off, staring at the screen for the first set of shells arriving approximately twenty kilometers from the opposing ships, where it separated into a hailstorm of hyper-velocity flechettes. I don't know, Katash shook her head. The limited missiles and support ships implies a supply problem. On the other hand, even if they do have all the kinetic shells they need, the invaders don't see the need to waste them on screening vessels. Even the flechettes seem to be inefficient against the so agile vessels. The first body hit nothing but space, but the second one got lucky. One of the screening ship's engines failed briefly, likely due to a laser scar that dug deeply into the rear third of the vessel. The ship tried to do a quick burn, like its companions, to evade the incoming cloud of metal. But its engine stuttered, giving the Dutch tile all the opening that they needed. Three fifteen centimeter by one meter spears tore through the lightly armored vessel, leaving a tree of neat holes and one flank of gout plasma and debris spraying from the other. A brief cheer went up around the command center as the small vessel died. Threedak didn't take her eyes off the display. The invader screening ships dodged and wove through the incoming walls of steel. As the range closed, they managed to catch one more screening vessel and a drone, instantly destroying the ships with the oversized weapon. Then, the three remaining invader screens entered an unguided kinetic range, and the plot erupted in fireworks. The Kurning stopped firing its main cannon, instead deploying its armored radiators to try and grant its laboring heat sinks some respite while the drones and screening vessels rushed towards each other, firing everything. The Dodge Dahl ships on the display flickered as all four screens opened fire from their dual-mounted railguns. The weapons were modular as the rails tended to burn out and required replacement after 40 to 50 shots, but they were cheap, light, and deadly everything that a forward picket needed. The drones wove together, firing autocannons into each other like knife range. The small craft only had a couple seconds of contact before the relative velocities pulled them apart, but those seconds were an orgy of destruction. 
at a kilometer away, even the most maneuverable craft was entirely unable to dodge, and an almost continuous ripple of explosions later, only eight Dutch Tull and fourteen invaded drones remained. Another cheer went up in the command center as the railgun round slammed into the flank of an invader's screen, ripping the furrow through the ship's armor and spinning it like a top. Elation gutted out as the invader's railgun round slammed into the prow of a Dutch Tull screen. The bridge crew were flung forward into their restraints and the ship suddenly lost momentum. The moment later, it lost all power as secondary explosions from the kinetic penetrator that cored its stealth destroyed the vessel's fusion reactor. The average railgun shot wasn't enough to destroy a screen. Their light armor barely even slowed the penetrators, but the slugs were only enough to destroy a couple rooms at a time. Grim redundancy kept most of the screens on both sides in the fight until they took three or four blows. But before long, the Dodge Doll superior numbers bore fruit and the last invader screen floated in dead space, trading a plume of twisted metal and plasma. Unfortunately, that weakened and limping survivors of the engagement were easy prey for the drones. Three Dak winced as the two remaining Dutch tall screens tried frantically to shoot down the oncoming drones. Unfortunately, a laser pulse could only do so much at longer ranges, so long as the fighters made sure to juke and roll enough to prevent the lasers from focusing on one spot for long enough to melt their armor. It was a difficult for the crippled screens to kill enough of the small craft to make a difference. Of the 14 drones that made it through the dogfight, only five avoided the screen's defenses long enough to achieve close range, but each of those erupted a little over three kilometers from the Dodge Tall vessels. Spears of light reached out from the explosions, plowing meter-wide holes into the deep of both screens. Their displays went red on the plot, and immediately the data being relayed to the Ashley Koenig threw them, and the drones ceased. Silence filled the command center as the invader drones robbed them of their partial victory. What in the hell was that? Katash erupted from the silence. I need an analyst to tell me what the hell just happened before I freaking eat them and pull the answer from their memories. For a second, no one dared respond. Then a rust-colored Dutch doll hesitantly raised a grasper. No need to be shy, Katash gestured towards the frustration. Out with it already. Ma'am? Her tail twitched spasmodically in agitation. The readings looked like a Kasaba howitzer. I don't remember humanity ever getting those to work in any sort of operational range. Three Dak cut in, frowning. Humanity didn't. The brownish red Dutch tar shook her head. They couldn't figure out a way to properly focus the nuclear blast to prevent the plasma from dispersing. By the time the invaders came, they considered it a dead field and moved on to other pursuit. A what, howitzer? Kadash asked with the frown. Remember, not all of us inherited William Drisco's memories. My knowledge of physics is limited to how engines and weapons work. Sorry, ma'am, the analyst responded nervously. A Casaba howitzers are nuclear-charged directed plasma weapons. A modified warhead vaporizes a shaped plate into plasma, which is fired in an incredible high-velocity jet. It disperses very quickly, meaning that you need to get close in to use it, but it's basically a much more dangerous version of the laser warheads at close range. Any further discussion was cut off by the command center's communicated chirping. My queen, admiral, Captain Lakshia's voice slurred, her image battered and stained with both soot and blood. We are entering extreme kinetic range of the enemy torches. Tell my daughters to sing songs of me. She cut off the connection, and the command center staff watched in silence as the Ashley Kooning withdrew its radiators and powered the capacitors for its main cannon. Both ships began firing at an almost the same time. It took almost 30 seconds for the kinetic rounds to cross the space between the ships, and in that time the Kooning managed to fire nine shells. Already, the crippled ship's heat sinks were beginning to run hot as it futilely tried to vent enough steam to make the difference. The invaders' partially guided shells tore into the cooling like a Starvok through carrion. Captain Naxia gave orders with an impossible calm as her armor shattered and the systems began to fail. She fired off one last salvo before a penetrator tore through her ship's forward reactor and cannon assembly. Her return fire wasn't in vain. At least three flesh shells and one penetrator severely damaged the invaded torch ship ripping most of its fore armor off and exposing a good portion of the inner workings to space. 
Another penetrator struck the Koenig, and the image from the bridge winked out along with the ship's sensor peed. No one spoke, respecting the tears tracing down Tridak's scaled muzzle as she wept for her granddaughters. End of chapter. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. If you enjoyed the story, please follow the link down below and let the author know. If you wish to support this channel, you can do all the usual YouTube gumph, like subscribing, following, and more importantly, sharing. All of these things do help the channel grow. If you wish to do more, there are links for donations, Patreon, and channel memberships as well. And until the next time, I hope that you all have a wonderful one. I will see you in the next video. Cheers.